For the benefit of your music production, let's learn about flex time. Quickly manipulate the timing and tempo of your recording with flex time. Easily move your individual beats within a waveform to correct drum, vocal, guitar, or any other kind of track without slicing and moving regions. Now, when we talk about flex time, it's very important that you understand the attached algorithm. Depending on what it is that we are recording and quote unquote flexing, we need to use the necessary algorithm. So I'm going to generalize here. Anytime you use drums, I want you to try out slicing. Now, a lot of this is happening automatically under the hood. So please be selective and please be intentional when selecting the algorithm. I find that rhythmic is best suited for loops and guitars. Anything that is monophonic, meaning one sound, let's think a bass or a monophonic synthesizer, mono seems to hold up pretty well. And then anything that is complex, you might want to use the poly algorithm. This could be chords. If you are sampling other songs, you might want to use the poly algorithm. So once you have analyzed the material and you set the appropriate algorithm, we can really start to take advantage of flex markers. Now there's only three you really have to know. The first is called single flex marker. And if you look at the top of the illustration here on the right hand side, that's what a single flex marker looks like. Now, depending on where you hover that flex marker, it's gonna look a little bit different. I'll explain more of the behavior in a second. But right underneath that, we have the triad flex markers, and they're either going to be disconnected or connected. The main difference being when you utilize a triad flex marker that's disconnected, this helps out stretch out notes. So if you're trying to have something sustain or Perhaps you get to the end of the song and you didn't play out the part long enough. This is great for that. Really great for vocals as well. Sometimes singers, because they need to breathe, they'll say the phrase and maybe they're in a bit of a hurry and so this can rectify that. When utilizing the connected triad flex markers, you can move just the source material that you're looking to isolate. So let's go through some examples. When you download the exercise, and if you go through the project notes, I talk to you about how to work with flex time. Now, if you go through the track notes, you get a lot more information about drums in general and other topics. Today, we're gonna be working with flex time on track number six, track number seven, and track number eight. So once you're ready to enter flex mode, you hit Command F and you'll notice that one specific thing happens. Up here, we are turning on the lights. We're opening up the flex window. Now, nothing is currently in flex, so it's not making much of a difference, but this is how you wanna start. So we are showing the flex window, and now it's time to enable flex within the tracks. Notice this only works for audio tracks, not software instrument tracks. Again, yet another reason how they differ. I'd like to make something absolutely clear. So if we look at this audio region here, I'm going to open up the flex window, and then I'm going to enable flex. Now you'll notice there in a split second, Logic analyzed the audio content, and then it goes on to create what we call transient markers. And these are visual cues to help us understand what it is that we're looking at on the screen. So they're not necessarily doing anything, but they're just helping us in regards to flex time. So it's not until I hover into the region that I can actually begin to create what we call flex markers. So I'm gonna hit Command Z. So even though we've analyzed the audio and we've detected transients, we're still not using flex time really. It's not until I hover over the body of the region and start to create flex markers that I am actually using the technology, that or going into the region inspector and choosing an automatic quantization value to set flex markers automatically among this entire region. Okay, so let's talk about what we're gonna work on now. So in this exercise, I would like for you to enable flex and then choose the appropriate algorithm. Don't let logic choose for you. I will choose polyphonic. Let's take a listen to this.
So we've enabled flex time and yet we still haven't told it to do anything. You can either do this manually or automatically. First I'll show you the manual approach and then we will use uh, the easier automatic way. So if I click at the top of this transient marker, that dotted line that you're seeing there, you will find that I will start to drag everything within the performance. And that may be something that you desire if you feel certain that it's going to align everything, but I'm not so sure. I might want to be a bit more careful, but let's take a look and let's take a listen to the result. So it's doing okay, but let's say we want to make another adjustment, but this time we're not interested in moving the entire performance and all the waveforms therein. All I want to do is take this one waveform right here and move it over to the left. This is when we want to take advantage of not the single flex marker, but the triad flex markers, and these are connected. So when I click one time, you can see that three flex markers were created, one, two, and three. So what this allows me to do here is move this specific audio waveform and play with either the sustain or the beginning of it without necessarily influencing the timing of these other two or the waveforms outside. So just a heads up, the snap to grid system completely influences the behavior of this as well. And this is why I teach the program this way. And so if I wanted to move, let's say this over to the right or to the left, I can do so and be aligned to the grid. But that doesn't mean that it's going to be on time. Just because these elements are aligned doesn't mean that the actual audio itself is going to sound good. Just a reminder. A good example of sustaining an element is creating a triad flex marker and then selecting another flex marker at the end of a phrase and then just stretching it out. Take a listen. Now in that case, it didn't work, but there will be some scenarios where that is going to be the right fit. And you don't have to use a unit of measurement. Let me work that off of the grid. Let's try this out. So that felt a little bit better. Let's move on to the next track. Now this is where I want you to go ahead and try this manually. So I'm gonna go ahead, enable flex one more time and using the polyphonic algorithm, snap to grid will be set to ticks so I can be off of the grid. Let's take a listen to what we have right now. that sounds pretty good. If you find yourself at this point having trouble navigating the screen, I highly recommend you click the key command E and you work within the audio track editor. It is a, a much better way to view audio in my opinion. So again, I'll make sure that flex is enabled here and let's take a listen. Okay, so I'll take this part here and I'm going to move it over to the left. Let's try this out. Okay, perfect. Okay, I'm going to take this performance here and definitely make it play ahead of the beat. Let's try it. Okay, that sounded a bit too contrived. Let's see if this feels better. Okay, I didn't mind that so much. If ever you are in a pickle, hover at the very top and click on that small X that you see right there. Uh, conversely, you can control click and delete flex marker. And this is probably a really good way to get a natural sound as well. Okay, we'll do one more. I've got one flex marker here. I've got another one here. And this is the one that I'm going to adjust. Let's 
click drag to the left. Okay, so remember the protocol there, you have to enable flex. If you don't see any flex markers is because you haven't done the work yet. So remember that you can do this manually or you can go up to the quantize menu and set this up in advance and this will do the work for you. Let's go over one more example. Let's hear before we run it through the flex algorithm. Okay, so I like this part, but it certainly is out of time. So let's enable flex and let's do some automatic quantizing. Let's pick a value of 16th notes. Let's see what this sounds like. Yeah, I like that a lot. This time we're going to utilize swing. So at the bottom of the quantization value here, we can go ahead and add swing. They say a perfect swing is at a value of 66. So let's see if this works for this particular track. Swing is basically moving every second and fourth beat to add a little bit more flavor to the song. So this is before. So it's on time, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it feels good. Let's try out this swing value. So that feels a little bit more natural to me. There are two more algorithms that I didn't mention earlier. So if I enable flex here, you can see at the very bottom, we have speed effects and tempo phone. Now these are creative effects that could yield some pretty interesting, strange, weird results. So I'll leave that up to you. But for now, I want to be practical. I want to be clinical. I want to make sure that you're able to tackle any audio situation that may come up. A great exercise to do is to take any random track. In this case, I have drums. So the slicing algorithm is probably best suited for this. It doesn't mean that I can't try out polyphonic on it. I mean, it may sound fantastic. So let's listen to this Latin pop drums loop. So let's say you wanted that loop to move over to the left. Well, if I use a single flex marker, we know that everything is going to move over. And so I'm not interested in that. What I'm trying to accomplish is a triad flex marker. Again, that creates three flex markers, one here, one there, and one there. And now I can isolate just the one in the middle. So we'll grab and we'll shift it over. And let's see what this sounds like. Yeah, and that may be best suited for the track that you're writing. So what I'm trying to do is liberate you. Uh, I want to give you as many options possible. And then I want you to pick and choose how you are going to attack your music production. All right, get to work, download the session, and I will see you on the next video.